Gil, thank you. Just to start from the beginning, Gil, Maritza, thank you so much for opening up your home to us tonight. Thank you for your support. Thank you for opening up your home to us. A little bit about my background. I spent about 30 years of my life running commercial print and copy centers. I ran two of my own small businesses. I was a veterinary technician for six years after I got tired of the copy world. I decided to do something that would help things that can't speak for themselves, animals. Once I was no longer able to do that because my knees finally said, you're not bending down anymore to hold large dogs, I started volunteering with the Humane Society as part of their National Disaster Animal Response Team. So Joplin Tornado, we were on the ground there for 10 days. Right after Sandy, I was on the Jersey Shore two days later. And I don't bring this up for the purpose of saying, what a nice guy, he's helping all these animals. What this allowed me to learn is how the private sector and government can work together to benefit the people in an area. We can't go in unless we're invited in by the local government, but then we work side by side with them to get things better for the people, make sure they have their pets. There were times where they were pulled from their homes, especially during Sandy, before they could get their animals out. We had search and rescue teams go in to get these animals for them to make their families whole again. And we could not do that without the support of the local government. So that's one thing you'll learn, is how to work hand in hand. As far as Mr. Albo is concerned, as Gil told you, his record on women's rights is horrendous. There is no time ever that a politician, specifically a male politician, has the right to tell a woman what she should or should not be doing with her body. It's that plain and simple. I have a great relationship with my wife. I couldn't tell her what to do. Never mind the rest of the population in this state. The gun rights issue that Gil brought up, not only did he vote to loosen carry restrictions, he made it where you can open carry in a bar. Again, what could possibly go wrong? He made it where you, he's trying to reduce the fingerprint requirement on concealed weapons. Because we definitely wouldn't want to know if this guy was a mass murderer from another state before we hand him a concealed weapon. So these are part of what he's done. He did do one thing good for the 42nd and for Nova. He did vote yes on the transportation bill. Is that the best bill in the world? No. It's flawed. It has a lot of holes in it. But at least he tried to do something to patch what's going on. The problem is, when they approached him about signing this bill, he told a couple of our senators from this area, like George Barker, I'm going to vote yes on transportation, but there's no way you're getting me to vote on Medicaid expansion. I can't give you both. So to him, it was an either-or situation. Not transportation helps us fix the roads. We were running out of money. And to add to that, the 300, 400,000 Virginians that will be covered on the Medicaid expansion, the approximate 40,000 jobs that it will create, and the fact that it's being paid for basically in full for the first three years by the federal government anyway, he can't give you both. He, he, I can't do both to help the people. I can do one or the other. This is where his mindset has been on this. It's just, he does very little for the people here. Most of his votes help the people in the southern part of the state. If you look at his voting record for the years, he also has a tendency of pulling money from the general fund for every bill that he supports, which is wonderful, except the general fund is not an ATM. General Fund pays for your schools, pays for your police, pays for your fire and rescue. If you keep pulling money out of that, salaries go down for teachers. He's very proud of the fact that right now teachers are earning on a 2008 salary level, which is wonderful except for the fact that we can't get any new teachers in the pipeline right now. They're going to other jurisdictions. Our schools are still near the top, but that's due to the teachers, not due to anything the state has been doing. So we have to stop pulling from that fund. We have to start paying these teachers at least equal to the other areas around us before we lose that whole advantage. We talk about getting jobs to this commonwealth. <coughs> Terry talks about it. This is something I harp on a lot, too. The only way to get a business to come in here is if they know it's going to be friendly to their employees. There's just so much that saying, oh, we'll give you a big tax break, bring your business, is going to fly. If my people can't get to work, 
they're not going to be welcomed. And by that I mean the attacks on females, the attacks on the LGBT community, the attacks on minorities. If this is going on, my employees are not comfortable being here. Why would I move the business? I could go to Maryland if I want to be that close to DC. It's right around the bend. There's no reason to bring it here. These are the things we have to stop. This is what we have to fight. These are the reasons I'm running for the House of Delegates, to get Virginia refocused on what's important, our schools, our economy. Get the social issues out of Virginia's House of Delegates. It has no place being in there. We need to get back to doing things that made this state number one for business, number one for schools. We've got to bring it back up again. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask now, or I can talk to you all individually later.